Are you feeling the financial squeeze lately? Well, buckle up because today we are about to unlock the secret stash of cash hiding in your very own real estate. Who knew owning a home could be such a lucrative love affair? Hey y'all, Amanda Rivard, your trusty local McKinney, Texas realtor, here to dish out some money-saving tips hotter than Texas barbecue. But before we dive in, hit that like and subscribe button like it's the last slice of pizza at a party. If you are a homeowner, then you should take some time to explore your tax deductions. If you need help tackling the details of your situation, I'd always recommend to speak to a tax professional to ensure that you are cashing in on all the tax deductions available to you. But now I'm going to talk to you about the most common ones. Mortgage interest. If you have a mortgage on your home, you can take advantage of the mortgage interest deduction. It's like getting a tax break for being in a committed relationship with your home. You can actually lower your taxable income through this itemized deduction of mortgage interest. In the past, homeowners could deduct up to 1 million in mortgage interest. However, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act has reduced this limit to 750,000 as a single filer or married couple filing jointly. If you are married but filing separately, the deduction limit is 375,000 for each party. Home equity loan interest. A home equity loan is essentially a second mortgage on your house. With a home equity loan, you can access the equity you've built in your home as collateral to borrow funds that you need for other purposes. Like regular mortgage interest, you can deduct the interest you've paid on home equity loans and home equity lines of credit. However, you can only claim this deduction if you use the borrowed funds to pay for a home improvement. Prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, you could deduct the interest on these loans regardless of how you spent the funds. Discount points. Have you ever heard of discount points? It's like getting VIP access to a lower interest rate. When you take out a mortgage, you may have the option to purchase discount points to lower your interest rate on the loan. If you have this option, one discount point will equate to 1% of the mortgage amount. If the points are purchased to reduce the mortgage's interest rate, you can deduct the cost of the discount points. However, loan origination points will not be tax deductible because these are fees that don't affect the interest rate of your loan. Property taxes. Ah, property taxes, the bill that keeps on giving. Deductions. As a homeowner, you'll face property taxes at a state and local level. You can deduct up to $10,000 of property taxes as a married couple filing jointly or $5,000 if you are single or married filing separately. Depending on your location, the property tax deduction can be very valuable. Necessary home improvements. Necessary home improvements can qualify as tax deductions. Of course, the definition of necessary is somewhat limited. If you upgrade your fully functioning kitchen, those improvement costs may not qualify. However, if you have to make permanent improvements to make your home more accessible for medical reasons, that should qualify. A few examples might include installing medical equipment, railings, or widening doorways for an accessible home. Home office expenses. Who says working from home doesn't pay off? With home office expenses, it's like turning working in your home, in your PJs, into a tax deduction. If you operate a business in your residence, you may be able to deduct some of the expenses of maintaining that space. The IRS requires that you use your home office for regular and exclusive business use in order to qualify for a deduction. If you only use the space when it's convenient or just for working from home for your employer, that will not qualify. In terms of the deductions, the size of the deduction is based on the percentage of your home dedicated to the place of business. Mortgage insurance. PMI got you down? Don't sweat it, it's like having a financial safety net with a side of tax deduction. Private mortgage insurance, or PMI, is another expense that many homeowners must factor into their budget. PMI is there to protect your lender if you are unable to continue making payments on your mortgage. You can deduct your mortgage insurance payments on your itemized tax return. Capital gains. Capital gains tax breaks come into play when you sell your home for a profit. The capital gain is the difference between the value of the home when you bought it and when you sold it. 
For example, let's say you bought your home for $100,000. A few years later, you sell your home for $150,000. With that deal, you walk away with a capital gain of $50,000. If you use the home as your primary residence for two of the last five years, you could keep some of the profits without any tax obligation. As a married couple filing jointly, you can keep up to $500,000 in capital gains. As a single filer or married couple filing separately, each party can keep up to $250,000 of capital gains without a tax obligation. The key is that you lived in the house for two of the last five years. With a big tax break on the table, it's important to take the rules that apply to this deduction seriously. There you have it, folks. Tax breaks so good, they'll make you wanna do a little happy dance come the otherwise dreaded tax season. But remember, always consult a tax professional for the real nitty gritty. Until next time, stay savvy, stay sassy, and keep those deductions coming. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All of my information is in the description box below. I would be happy to chat with you about any of your real estate questions. Amanda Rivard signing off. Catch you on the flip side.